forget I don't know how the fire died But I'm asking you to come and light the fire again Hi, um, today I want to share with you um, one of the most powerful and revolutionary teachings of Jesus uh, to the disciples and to us all. And uh, in Matthew 5, 4, it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We all we've been experiencing mourning, suffering, crying, because we lost people. We lost their ones. We are frustrated because we lost holidays. We lost uh, a lot of things. And we all experience in that. But we need to be together. We need to accept that we are just humans. And we need to accept, most of all, that is somebody there, God, through Jesus Christ, that he's there. Yeah, good morning and hello, everybody. This is uh, Ed. I serve uh, on the team at Rakesi Parish Church with my wife, Pamela. 
And today I'm walking around Drakesi, and as I'm praying for the neighborhood, and uh, just uh, thinking about the scripture of the week, which is, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And um, yeah, I've just been thinking about it as I've been praying for the neighborhood, as I've been walking around, I've been thinking about all the losses that uh, our community, uh, our larger community, and not just Rakesi, but Glasgow and the entire world, in fact, all the losses that we've suffered during this pandemic and how really um, they need to be recognized and not dismissed or ignored. The fact that we can't even meet in church right now and worship together, that's a real loss, at least it is for me. And, um, and, I, and I suspect it is for many people that we can't get together and eat and fellowship and hug on each other's necks, as we say in America, and love one another like that. I know that um, we've experienced losses in this time and uh, you know, our families have experienced loss, whether they be kids with school or they be jobs or there be just the freedom to, to move around as we would normally do. Um, our health has been impacted. We've lost health in some cases, temporarily or otherwise. And the list goes on and on, right? And that's just on top of the normal losses of life. Apart from COVID, apart from the pandemic, is things like divorce, things like um, uh, death. But in the midst of all of it, I guess the most important thing is to remember that God feels what we feel. He knows what it means. He knows what it feels like to grieve a loss. He lost his own son so that he could save the world. And it says in the Bible that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. So when the Bible says to grieve our losses, or mourn our losses, mourn is it really important to recognize that God cares, that we don't have to stuff it, we don't have to become angry, we don't have to become um, bitter, but we just go before God and say, this is a real loss and, and, and let our emotions flow, have a good cry, <laughs> Find someone's shoulder that we can cry on or talk to at least. Um, I just want to encourage all of my friends out there that get to hear this video that God does care and that he will comfort us. I know that from experience in my own life. Hi everyone. So this week as we are looking at the beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, uh, I think it's a really great opportunity to consider uh, how Jesus really can turn around uh, our worst circumstances, our worst experiences, and how he can turn them around for good. And so to look at that, I wanted to share a bit of my, my personal story with you. Um, so uh, my mom passed away two and a half years ago. And when that happened, uh, I, I really did, under, I understood that I was at this, I was at a crossroads in a, in a lot of ways. And that this was one of the hardest things, probably the hardest thing that I had ever um, had to face in my life at that point. And I knew that I could press into God. You know, I could I could trust and believe in the things that that the Bible said that um, that I claimed to believe, and I could walk that out and um, and and really understand at a deeper level. Um, you know, have a deeper conviction of those teachings. Uh, or I could choose to see things through that lens of pain and anger that I was experiencing. And it would have been quite easy, to be honest, uh, to, to turn away from, from the Lord. But I chose to, to stick with God. Um, and I mean, I was definitely in a place where I felt very hopeless. Uh, and I didn't have a lot of expectation, but I decided to to let God into my circumstances, and and to to welcome Him in to try to turn things around, and to basically you know welcome Him in to fight that battle for me. And so what I what I really found in that time was actually the Lord became uh, more real to me than He ever had been before. Um, he, his presence was just so, uh, so real 
to me and and I I really just grew during that time in my relationship with with Jesus so much um, despite all the grief and the pain and the suffering that 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 time um, encapsulated I really did grow so much in that relationship and I, I think part of it was because I had such a great dependency on on the Lord and um, and I really had to press into him to keep going because, uh, yeah, there was just a lot of challenges coming up in those, in those months. And, you know, so one, one example is that I started having really bad panic attacks and, you know, almost every day I would have a panic attack. But, uh, what I, what I started noticing was that in, in the midst of that, of those attacks, I would start to feel this, this like weight come on me. Um, and, and then I would start to sort of feel, the only way I can describe it is like a wave, a wave of peace. And, um, and then my mind would start to be filled with very positive thoughts, which was like the total opposite of the place that I was in. So I was in this, I was, you know, my, my narrative was very much focused on, on the loneliness, on on the pain, on the uncertainty that I was experiencing, but but in those moments when I felt those waves of peace, when I felt the Lord's presence so strongly, uh, my mind would then also be filled with really life-giving thoughts, um, really positive thoughts, and they were all pointing me towards having hope, to believing in the Lord, you know, He is who He says He is, that He was going to walk me through the other side of this, and that I was going to be able to look back on this time and and see the value in it and see how much I had grown and advanced despite, you know, this this intensity that I was experiencing. And uh, and it's true, you know, now that a few years have passed, I really am able to look back on that season and I can see how much mercy and grace and love God showed me in that time. And that he really did walk me through those circumstances where, you know, I had no idea how to navigate them. And he really did walk me through it. And I can see now, you know, he where I had anger, he gave me forgiveness. Uh, where I had loneliness, he gave me relationship. Where I had... Um, you know, sadness and, and hopelessness. He gave me hope. He gave me love. Uh, so I really can look back on that time and just see what a mighty work God did and just how capable he is of turning those bad situations around. And, and I think, you know, when we look at this, this beatitude of blessed are those who mourn, it can be challenging that idea of how are we how are we supposed to find happiness in this place of mourning in this place of suffering and uh, I think that's that's just the really beautiful thing about about the Lord is that when we're in those really challenging circumstances um, he it, it's like an opportunity to become more like Jesus when we walk through those challenges we learn so much and then we can use what we've learned to help others walk through those things. So, you know, if you've, if you've experienced loneliness, you understand what it means to be lonely. If you've experienced grief, you understand what it means to be grieving. And, you know, in that same way, you can use that, those, those things that you've walked through, that you've suffered in, to help others who are now experiencing that. And in that way, we grow more like Jesus. We become more like Jesus in that we grow in our compassion. Um, and our and our willingness to stand next to others who are going through things and similar challenges that we've experienced and we can genuinely come to them and say you know I've been through this I've I've seen this I've walked through this and I want to help you um, I want to be with you uh, in this time and and share share what I've experienced to try to help you get through this and so I think that's that's the really beautiful thing about the Lord is that we we should never doubt his ability to turn what looks like a really hopeless uh, circumstance, you know, our worst circumstances. He is more than capable of turning those around for good. We just need to be willing to let him in. So I hope that this week you feel encouraged and uh, and that you 
uh, are able to spend some time with the Lord and and see, um, you know, what He wants to do in your life, what sort, how He how He would love to to partner with you to turn your circumstances around. So have a very blessed week, everyone. So letting ourselves feel grief and cry in moments of loss can be really healing. It lets God know we are mourning our losses. He hears our cries of the heart and comforts us. We might not understand why God allows loss and grief, but we can rest in his infinite love and comfort. When we think of his son Jesus' suffering on the cross, we know he understands our pain and tears, and that is such a comfort. We are in good company because he shares in our grief. For God has cried tears over us and with us. Just like the vials in the picture that we're going to show you, that are holding te our tears, God knows and keeps our tears. Mm -hmm. In Psalm 56, David says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. That's amazing. His tears mm. merge with ours when we are mourning great losses. Let's pray. I thank you, Lord. That when we suffer deep loss, when our hearts are full of grief and our spirits feel crushed with overwhelming despair, you hear our cries and see our pain. Because of Christ's suffering whilst on this earth, you also know and understand the full depth of our pain and our grief during times of great loss. Thank you, Lord, that you do not leave us alone in our despair, but you run quickly to us to comfort us and pour out our unending love over us, that you cry with us and suffer our pain and grief alongside us. Thank you, Lord, that you pick us up and wipe away our tears, that in the midst of our pain, you show us your joy and your laughter so that we may also experience the full depth of your love, your peace and your deep compassion for us. Thank you, Lord, that none of your promises fail, that you never abandon or leave us, but you are always there for us to guide us through our darkest valleys, to bring us beside still waters and you lie us down in green pastures. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
song I want In valley or pasture We shall not 